Let me start by mentioning something that's a serious problem for big companies, which is they don't keep records. They, they may be named, you know, the Exxons and the Chevrons and the BPs and the, the ConocoPhillips of this world may be named as an additional insured on a thousand insurance policies for all I know, but it's unusual for someone actually to assemble that information in a single place. And so what's happening now is that a couple of vendors have come into the market with programs that the contract people at large companies can use to record where they've been named as an additional insured, which in turn means going out to the lawyers who were negotiating or reviewing contracts or the business people and making sure that they in turn feed that information to the person who's assembling the database, which has another issue, which is the most you typically get from the entity that named you as an additional insured is what's called a certificate of insurance, which is a one-page piece of paper that gives you no information uh, other than name of insurer, name of insured, limits, and if you're lucky, it will identify the forms, but that doesn't give you enough information. So again, the vendor wants you to go back and get more information. So that's one issue, is record it. The second uh, item is, can you negotiate a better form than the minimums? After Deepwater Horizon, um, insurers in the oil and gas sector were saying, absolutely not. We are giving you, we are putting express language in the insurance policy, whether ISO or manuscripted, saying you get the minimums, because they didn't want another Deepwater Horizon. And, and that was not the only example of that. Just to take one example that I personally worked on in the 90s, there was an explosion in a chemical plant in Texas, and the owner of the plant was named as an additional insured for at least $5 million. Um, there were a number of deaths from the explosion. The ultimate liability to the families of the, the people who died, even in the 90s when, when you know, numbers were lower than they are now, was in the nine figures. And because of the way the policy was worded, which was, you know, you're an, you're an insured, you're an insured, I think that the insurers ended up paying something like $160 million on a contract that just required the owner to be an additional insured for at least $5 million. So um, that's important. As I said, after Deepwater Horizon, insurers suddenly said, oh, wait, we won't do that. What I'm seeing is that the market is getting a little looser right now. Uh, there, there's more willingness to negotiate but only with entities that have a proven safety track record. So you, 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 know, you, you have to show you actually know what you're doing and then some underwriters are willing to take the risk. But at bottom, it's now an informed risk rather than an accidental risk, so to speak. That is, oh, we didn't look at what we just issued. And there's obviously a difference in jurisdictions in the United States between safety rules and enforcement and safety practices. But I think if there's one thing that we've learned from the last 10 years is that safety is the absolute, absolute critical for every facility in the energy, energy industry.